Men of spirit. Oh, you're not ready at all. Men of spirit. All right, when it's found, somebody say amen. All right, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. The Word of God says, Then it happened, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Elijah said to him, sorry, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your fathers have. In that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter? How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. Someone say amen. amen. But if Baal, follow him. Look at this now. But the people answered him, not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore give us two bulls. And let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces. And lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Are we together, everybody? Then call on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. One God. And the God who answers by fire. He. Somebody say he. No, that's not everybody. Somebody say he. He is God. So all the people answered. So all the people answered and said. It is well spoken. Rejecting. Passivity. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we look at your word, we ask that you would open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, so that we can receive of you, so that we can receive you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love to talk about this text. And the reason I love to talk about this text is that there is a glaring problem in it. Not a problem in the uh, literature. Not a problem in the grammar. Not a problem in its truthfulness. For the word of God is true. Somebody say amen. amen. But there is a problem in this text. And the Bible uh, positions Ahab and Elijah in this confrontation. And Ahab, as he approaches Elijah, he says to him, Is that you, the troubler, the one who's causing problems, the one who's responsible for our situation? And understand that Israel. Uh, was in about, about three years drought at the time. Is that you, O troubler of Israel? Then Elijah answers, it's not me, it's you. In fact, if you're so sure that it's not you, why not call all Israel together? 
And then Ahab uses his kingly office and gathers all Israel together. And the Bible says that Elijah, uh, Elijah then speaks these words to them. He says, how long will you halt between two opinions? If God is God, you follow him. If Baal be God, you, followed him, you follow him. And the people answer him not a word. Are we together, everybody? There is a problem, Pastor Charles, in this text. And the problem becomes apparent as you look at the toss and catch between Elijah and Ahab. Uh, Ahab challenges Elijah and Elijah answers. Hello? Then Elijah challenges Ahab and Ahab answers. Are we together, everybody? Note, Ahab challenges, Elijah answers. Elijah challenges Ahab answers, but then Elijah challenges the people of God, and the Bible says that they answer him. Oh, you're not with me at all. The problem in the text is not with Ahab, it's not with Elijah, for they answer their challenge, but when it comes to the people of God, the Bible says that they answer him. Not a word. No answer to the God question. No answer to the faith question. No answer to the abstinence question. No answer to the sexuality question. You're not with me yet. No answer to the church question. No answer to the marijuana question. No answer to the justice question. And the question really is, how did God's people, who are supposed to be so opinionated and, and strongly convicted, how would God's people, how could God's people find themselves in a position where they don't have an answer? And so I try to understand passiveness, which is a word, by the way. Passiveness is a noun that denotes the condition of someone or something. You can use it when you want to say that someone is not taking an active role in the things going on around them. You're following me? That someone is letting things go by without reacting to them. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. Or that someone is letting something be done to them without resisting. Passiveness. And so how could God's people who serve this awesome, omnipotent, all, all majestic God not have an answer? The problem becomes even more glaring in verses 23 and 24, where Elijah says, Therefore let them give us two bulls, and let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And then he says, And I will prepare another bull, and put no fire under it. And then he says, And, and the God who answers by fire, let him be God. And then the people say, it's all good. Anybody follow me so far? They answered not a word. And now that Elijah presents to them a situation where they don't have to do anything, where they don't have to get involved, where they don't need to get active, where, where things would happen, and whatever happened, we're going along with it, they say, it's all good. You say, Elijah, you know, you have well spoken. And the truth is that passiveness has never been the posture of God's people. You only hear me, I told you. Huh? Passiveness 
Yes, yes, we serve a God who can do all things and is all powerful and, and, and there's nothing too hard for him. But, but understand that, that, that where God would have said to the Israelites that I will fight for you and you will have your peace. That it was God who split the Red Sea in two, but it was the people. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. It was the people that walked and that moved through the Red Sea. Yes, yes, it was God who, 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 with his voice, would have thrown down the walls of Jericho. But it was God's people that marched. Are we together, anybody? Passivity has never been the posture of God's people. Yes, yes, it was God who defeated Goliath. But it was David that fought. Anybody follow me at all? Even as Jesus prays, not my will, but thy will be done. He died actively. Oh, y'all hear me at all. In fact, he says, no one takes my life. He says, I put down my life. And because I put it down, I can take it up again. Passivity, passiveness has never been the posture of God's people for obedience is a reaction. Faith is an active expression of trust in God. In fact, God does not beat us into submission. He loves us into relationship. Mm -hmm. And so how does God's people get to the point of passiveness? How does God's people Get to the place where they're okay with okay. Where they're all right with anything. How does God's people come to the place where they answer him? Not a word. And the story that piqued my interest is the story of Cain. Are we together? In fact, Cain's story is the second part to the story of the fall. And because it's part two, Cain's rebellion is not eventful, but his sin is extraordinary. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Mm -hmm. God, after Adam and Eve fell, established discomfort in the fellowship of man with the enemy. Are we together? You see it in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. God says, and I will put enmity between you and, y'all follow me please, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. She shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. You know the text now. And God would have established discomfort. For hear what God says. He says, I will put enmity. I will put enmity. Between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. Now understand that the enemy represents everything that is anti-God. Are we scared, everybody? And observe that God did not put man in the middle of him and God. Mm -mm. God oriented man at his position. Mm -mm. God placed man on God's side. <laughs> And the Bible talks like that, you know. God says, I place before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he orients you towards his side. He says, choose life. Are we together, everybody? Hmm? He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. And I love this. Because when God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, he's saying that I will put enmity to sit down between you and the woman. Mm -hmm. You're on opposite sides. You, you are on different places. And, and then when I understand what enmity is, in fact, I'm told that, that the word enmity refers to the pole that holds up the Jewish tent. And when it's down, there's a pointy end that is angled towards the enemy. Y'all with me yet? So that every time one thinks of crossing the line, they have to go through a pole that's pointing its pointy edge towards them. Help me so far. And so there's discomfort in crossing the line. Oh, help me, Jesus. 
<laughs> the seed of the woman does not end up on the side of the enemy without discomfort. So that if that's the case, how did Cain end up in the situation that he ended up in? Hmm? Look at chapter 4. Huh? Look at chapter 4. Verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, And the Lord said to Cain, you're seeing this? Why are you so angry? Remember Cain and Abel, they offered, they offered sacrifices to God. Cain offered the fruits of the ground, and Abel offered the first fruit of his flock, and God accepted the sacrifice of Abel and rejected the sacrifice of Cain. And here is Cain angry, and God says, why are you so angry? <laughs> and why has your face fallen? Cain, why are you looking so? Cain, why, why, why are you moving like that? Cain, why, why are you breathing like that? God says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, watch this line now. Sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. Are oh, we together, everybody? Huh? And I hear what God says. But you should rule over it. Uh, I love this. I want you to follow it quickly. The first issue, how did Cain get there? How did God's people get to the point where they answer him not a word? When the Bible says that sin lies at the door, it is, it is not talking about the outside of the door. You're not with me yet. Sin is lying on the inside of the door. Mm-hmm. The metaphor that God is using there is that of a snake. Mm -hmm. And usually if a snake is in the house, you're uncomfortable. But the fact that sin is lying on the door. Mm -hmm. The fact that sin is lying at the door is, is God saying to, 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 to Cain that sin for you is like a pet. You're not with me at all. Come on, come on, come, come, come on somebody, come on. <laughs> you have been petting it. You have been playing with it. You have been dancing with it. You have been talking to it. And so now it is a member of your family. It is lying. Oh, help me, help me somebody. Are we together, anybody? Huh? <laughs> and then God says to Cain, he says, listen, if, if, if for you, if you are not seeing that you are in a problem, if you are not seeing that you are in the wrong, Cain, then it could be, then it should be, then it must be that, that you've been petting sin. But then he says, Cain, understand this, that even though sin has been lying on the ground, it's simply biding time until it bites you. When he says its desire is for you, he's saying it, it, its belly is burning and, and it wants to consume you. Mm -mm. But you've been playing with it. You've been petting it. You've, you've been feeling good about it. You've been looking at it on television. Mm -hmm. Come on, you, you've been petting with it and, and you've been playing with it. And, 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 and when no one's looking, you, you, you buy it in the shop. You've been, you've been petting with it and you've been playing with it and, and, and your children know who you are even though the people at church don't know. And one day came, that sin will consume you. But hear what God says. But you must rule. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But you must rule over it. And that word rule here means dominion. Are we together, everybody? Uh, can I tell you what dominion means quickly? A dominion, I'm told, it's, it's, it's an imagery given uh, about, about a tent. Mm -hmm. and, and in the tent is a, that is a dirt floor, is, is a mud floor. You're with me, right? Yes. And, and so before the, before the chief of the village comes into the tent, you spread a cloth on the floor. Mm -hmm. Oh, forgive me. You spread a cloth on the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so when the chief sits, he sits on the ground, but he sits on the cloth. 
And when the chief gets up after sitting, the shape of his body is left in the dirt so that the chief is touching the dirt, not directly, but indirectly. What the chief is doing, he's touching the cloth. When God says to man, I give you dominion, God is saying to man that there are some things that I want to touch, but I'm not going to touch it directly. I'm going to touch it through. Come on, come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, 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 I'm going to touch it through you. And so when God named the animals, God was naming the animals, even though Adam was naming the animals. Because God was naming the animals through so when God says to Cain, but you must rule over it, God is saying to Cain that your only way through is if you treat sin the way that I treat sin. In other words, Cain, you need to break the head. Come on, come on, come on, somebody, come on. You need to break the head of that snake that you've called a pet. Because until you do, you cannot rule judiciously. Until you do, you cannot rule actively. Until you do, you would never rule effectively. And so God is saying to men in South Korea this morning to rule on. Rule with purpose. Come on, come on somebody. Rule on. Rule actively. Don't wait for things to happen. You be the cause. Rule on. Amen.